Day 44, Part 2, The Notes. Number 1, radar works by sending out radio waves and listening for the echoes. The more time it takes for the echo return, the farther away the item is. So the computer inside the, the radar system does the calculations with the equation speed equals distance divided by time. The computer knows the speed of the radio signals, knows the time it takes to return the echo, and therefore they can do that simple math to figure out the distance to the object. A new kind of radar called Doppler radar also tells the speed of objects. Now the way they do that is by listening to the echo and not only telling the time of the echo, but also how the frequency of the radio signal changes. To think about that, imagine a car going down the road and passing by, um, per perhaps a race car, and the typical sound of a car passing by is something like zoom. You have a lower pitch as you have the car go away from you. Race car sounds go down as the car goes away from you. So in a similar way, objects that are moving away from the radar dish will cause the radio signal to go to a lower pitch, a lower frequency. Please change this word toward to be away from. Number six, objects that are moving toward the radar dish will cause the radio signal to go to a higher frequency. So the radar systems here not only have a system to tell the time of the echo, but they also analyze the frequency of the echo and see how it has changed from when the radar sent it out. And the differences tell us which way the objects are moving. Number seven, if the NWS, that's the National Weather Service, if the National Weather Service issues a severe weather watch, that means the conditions exist that could possibly create dangerous weather at any time, so just keep your eyes open. But if the National Weather Service issues a severe weather warning, it means that danger does exist right now. There has been bad stuff seen. It has been verified, so take cover. Number nine. On a weather map, severe rain can be seen as red areas, and so areas of watches or warnings are often shown as red boxes. Number 11, find the website for a current and projected radar from the National, w National Weather Service at www.weather.com. You can do that after um, you're done with these notes, and you can see um, active alerts different areas of the country that have warnings or watches. Number 13, clouds. There we go. Clouds get charged during a storm, so the top is positive and the bottom is negative. The exact reason for this is not certain. There are different theories for it. It might be due to particles in the clouds rubbing against each other. Um, by the winds in the clouds. That's the best theory so far, I think. Number 14. When charges build up enough, sparks will fly, just like when you rub your feet on a carpet and touch a doorknob. The charges may fly within a cloud, between two different clouds, or between the cloud and the ground. Each lightning bolt may actually be made by many back-and-forth jolts one bolt going from the cloud to the ground and then immediately from the from the ground back up to the cloud back and forth back and forth maybe six or seven times number sixteen the charges naturally fly to find the opposite charges it generally finds the shortest path finding the shortest path that's why uh, lightning will hit the tallest object number seventeen the air heats up to about 20,000 degrees when all these charges are flying through it. Number 18, this heating causes very quick expansion. This sets up vibrations that we hear as thunder. Sound waves are just vibrations in the air. Number 19, the light of the lightning travels virtually instantaneously. The sound, however, travels much slower. The more delay difference between the lightning and the thunder means more distance away the lightning was. 
For every five seconds delay, the lightning was one mile away. Number 20. What should you do to avoid being hit by lightning? The biggest thing is don't stand by trees or other tall objects. Remember, lightning wants to get to the ground the fastest way possible, the shortest way possible, and so they'll hit the tallest objects. Number 21, can you survive being hit by lightning? Yes, indeed you can. And you'll have a video at the end of your homework that um, one of them shows the actual film footage of people being hit by lightning. I assume that it's real footage and not just Photoshop stuff, people pranking. Um, and then there's another video of 10 different people. It doesn't actually show them being struck, but um, it shows their feet, um, their shoes um, that are blown apart, or uh, clothing that got burned and stuff like that. Number 22. Should you talk on a landline during a thunderstorm? And that answer is no. And by a landline here, I mean um, a corded phone, one where you actually have a cord going to the wall. Uh, because lightning can strike the telephone wires near your house and the um, electricity can flow through the phone wires and shock you. I've heard of people being thrown across the room because the electricity going through their body makes their legs uh, jerk and that makes them jump really far landing across the room. Um, but a cell phone or a cordless phone, um, that would be okay to... Um, to talk on because there's no direct connection between you and the lightning there. Number 23. Some buildings have lightning rods at the top connected to the ground by thick cables. These allow lightning to get to the ground safely without going through the structure and destroying things on the inside. Why does some sharp, why is some thunder sharp and quick while others are long and rumbling? Well, with the sharp, quick uh, thunder, that's most likely from a lightning bolt that's straight up and down. Each little section of the zigzag lightning makes its own thunder, and since it's all straight up and down, all of those little thunderbolts from each little section reach you at the same time. Sounds from all parts of the lightning reach you at the same time. However, when you have a very horizontal bolt, this bolt can be many miles long. They've had people struck by lightning uh, from a cloud that's 10 miles away. So a bolt many miles away um, can still, I said that wrong, the bolt can be many miles long. You hear the sound from each part at different times in one long rumble. So you hear first the, the thunder from this part, and then a split second later, you hear the thunder from the next part up and then the next part up. And each one of these is a millisecond after the other. And so all together, they make a long rumble. Number 25. Hail sometimes develops in a thunderstorm when there are severe updrafts. They push raindrops very high where they freeze. These updrafts can be really, really strong, more than 100 miles an hour. And so they can hold up the raindrops to different degrees for moments of time. Number 27, the longer these frozen raindrops are suspended, the more they can grow. Why do storms happen very often at night? It's not completely understood, but it's thought that the at night, the upper air cools faster than the lower air, and the lower, the cooler air sinks, forcing moist air near the ground upwards. This forms clouds and, if big enough, thunderstorms. Okay, that's the end of the notes. Here I have a long list of videos that you can see. Some of them are just for fun at the bottom, but the top ones are going to be for homework. Please do the... Um, the wrap-up questions right now. Go ahead and rip them out and put them in the blue box. And then there is a separate sheet of paper for um, homework. Uh, for each one of the videos that I have listed, I have uh, a few questions. There are 10 minutes of videos, and I think it's like 10 questions. Please note that the questions on the sheet 
um, might be misnumbered, and you will have to renumber them appropriately. That's it.